So today we're going to talk about manganese, which is very different than magnesium. Uh, but you don't really hear much about manganese. So let's, let's talk about what it is. It's a trace mineral, which means you need it. It's essential, but you need it in very, very small amounts. So manganese is a coenzyme. What's a coenzyme? It's a helper compound involved in certain types of proteins. In this case, talking about bone, which by the way, is mostly protein and connective tissue itself. So if you're deficient in manganese, you could have a problem with bone and connective tissue, which equal joints, okay? So you're gonna have knee pain, joint problems, shoulder pain, problems with your ligaments. So let's just say, for example, your mother, uh, when she was carrying you, was deficient in manganese. You could end up with uh, problems with connective tissue issues like flat feet and problems with your skeletal structure. So you can end up with skeletal deformation. You can also have muscle spasm, inflammation, primarily because manganese is involved with very powerful antioxidants in your body. It's part of the defense mechanism to protect you against free radicals. And this is why if you don't have enough of it, you get a lot of inflammation. And as a side note, there's this microbe, a bacteria, Deinococcus radiodurans. This is the toughest bacteria on planet Earth. It can withstand over 500,000 rads of ionizing radiation. I mean, think about it. 100 rads would kill a person. These microbes can withstand 500,000 rads, and they can survive the cold, dehydration. They're extremely tough. And guess what? They use manganese to protect against the free radicals that are generated. And lastly, you can have a buildup of ammonia, okay, which is kind of like the byproduct of urea and protein metabolism. Okay, what foods are high in manganese? Clove is number one, pecans, it's in grains, but here's the problem. We don't recommend grains for a couple reasons. Number one, they're not keto friendly. Number two, they have phytates, especially if they're whole grains. Phytates inhibit manganese, they bind it. Same thing with zinc. Tea has tannins, which block manganese. So even though there is manganese in tea and a lot of other herbs, if there's tannins in there, it's not going to be absorbed. Spinach is high in this thing called oxalates, okay? Oxalates bind with manganese and calcium as well. So these three are not good sources. Pumpkin seeds, kale, squash, sea kelp are also good sources. This is just another reason why you should have a diet that has a lot of variety and not just eat one thing all day because you wanna get these trace minerals. One really important point about manganese and other trace minerals is that you don't wanna consume large amounts of these for long periods of time. If you want to take some, let's say, for example, you have a knee pain or something, you take it small amounts in a blend of other trace minerals for short periods of time, okay? Because it can be very toxic if you take too much. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.